Trusting in God's mercy, we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. Prayer, fasting, and works of love, the discipline of Lent, help us to wage our spiritual warfare. I invite you, therefore, to commit yourself to this struggle and confess your sins, asking our Father in heaven for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Let us now make confession. Almighty God, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and inequities, with which I have offended you, and for which I justly deserve punishment. But I am sorry for them, and repent of them, and pray for your boundless mercy. For the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Forgive my sins, give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my life, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. God does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live. Therefore we implore him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things that we do on this day may please him, that the rest of our life may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At the Passover, the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show for us doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the third Sunday in Lent, and I hope that by now you've put together some sort of a Lenten discipline 
you're doing some things that will help you stay away from things that get you into trouble or that are working against your faith, as well as perhaps picking up one or two new things that will draw you closer to Christ. I hope that's true. You know, when I think about Christmas, I think about the baby Jesus in the manger. And I think about baby Jesus, meek and mild. You know, no crying he makes. I don't know about you, but pretty much every child I've ever known cries at least once or twice as before they grow up. I mean, it just happens. We're human beings. We do that. When we're hungry or perhaps a wet diaper, it will cause one to cry. And so we kind of have this vision, I think, of Jesus as being meek and mild. And that's fine until we get to this gospel reading that you heard a few moments ago. Because the Jesus who enters the temple during the Passover, he's neither meek nor mild. He is a man that is possessed by his faith and is full of anger at what he sees. For he finds people selling cattle, sheep, and doves in the temple, and the money changers are seated at their tables. Now, some of this makes sense because, of course, people needed to sacrifice cattle and sheep and doves in the temple. And unless you brought your own cattle or sheep or doves with you when you came to the temple, perhaps you would want to buy them uh, as close to the temple as you could. Likewise, if you came from a foreign country, your coinage would have kings or emperors on it, and that coinage was not allowed in the temple. You would have to exchange it for proper coinage that could be used in the temple. So animals and money changers on the way to the temple make sense. But Jesus is angry because they're in the temple. They're literally in the temple. And so he makes a whip of cords and he drives all of them out. And he pours the coins of the money changers and overturns their tables. And to those who are sell selling doves, he says, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remember that it is written in the Old Testament by the prophet, zeal for your house will consume me. I'll stop there, because we, we see Jesus as a, a very meek and mild soul. And the truth is, he was a strong man of faith, a human being who had worked as a carpenter in his youth. And in order to be a carpenter, you had to be a strong person. I mean, just working with, with, with wood the way he did, and sometimes some very large pieces of wood. He had to be a muscular, muscular man. He had to be strong. Moreover, he lived in Galilee, and in Galilee the people had been persecuted by the Romans for many years. The Galileans were treated badly by the Romans. There was a reason to be angry at times. And so he shows this anger, not to the Romans, but to his own people, who seemed to have forgotten what, what the temple was for. The temple was not for selling animals for the sacrifice or for exchanging money. It was for prayer, for sacrifice, for forgiveness. I guess I like this picture of Jesus. I think, I think the picture of Jesus kind of walking quietly with his disciples from place to place, blessing people and bringing healing and exercising demons, that's wonderful. But it's a wonderful thing to know that when he saw that there was something wrong, he just got angry. He simply got angry with a righteous anger. A lot of us get angry all of the time, and a lot of times our anger is not particularly righteous. Someone annoys us, or someone gets in our way, and we get angry at him, or her. But Jesus was angry for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. The temple needed to be a place of prayer, and sacrifice, and forgiveness, and mercy. My hope for us is as we hear this scripture, we recognize that there's a time for being angry. There just simply is. But there's a lot of time when we should not allow our anger to take control of us. During this time of COVID-19, I'm sure all of us have been angry at a number of circumstances. The world had, has been turned on its head and is still not quite right. Even though the vaccine continues to bring us all hope and to the day when we'll perhaps be together and enjoying worship and, and our lives as we had in the past. It's okay to be angry, 
But if you're going to show anger, let it be a good anger, a righteous anger, an anger at something wrong and that people not understanding what's right, especially if it involves God. I tend to think that there are lots of different kinds of sins, but the kind of sin that God probably hates most is is people treating others badly for no particular reason. That kind of anger that kind of slips out because someone is the wrong place at the wrong time or says something that makes us uncomfortable. That's the kind of anger that we should be careful not to let loose. But if you're angry at someone who doesn't have the rights that they should have, if you're angry that people are not being fed the way they should be, or being clothed the way they should be, or not having homes the way they should be, that's not a particularly bad anger. The world is not what it should be. We should use our anger and frustration at the way the world is to do something good and right, to build up our our culture, our society, our nation. Use that anger for good purposes, not to do terrible things to one another or to blame someone for something that's happened. Jesus goes on to, to tell those Jews who were in the temple, what sign will you give us? Jesus says, I'll destroy this this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And those who hear him think he's talking about the temple in Jerusalem. It's taken him more than 46 years to build it up. How can it be destroyed and be raised in three days? But Jesus is talking about his own body and how his own body will be killed and how he will be raised from the dead in three days. Remarkable things are still happening in the world. God is still at work in us and with us to do good things. It's okay to be angry sometimes. And perhaps it's good to use our anger for good purposes. Let's find ways to use our anger and frustration to do constructive things. To do, to do Christian things. To reach out with the love of Christ out of our anger and frustration. Perhaps to build a better nation, perhaps to be kinder to one another, because in the past we have not been as kind as we could be. May God's word be a blessing to us, and always keep in mind this Jesus who is not just meek and mild, but one who is strong in his faith, one who trusts in his Father implicitly, and one who is willing to go to the cross, if that's what it takes to save the world. Amen.
Let us pray. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing besides you. Guide your church, that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to change our wasteful way of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Fill leaders with a love for your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering, especially everyone who suffers from COVID-19 and everyone on our prayer list. Defend the victims of crime and open the hearts of all who have harmed others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Give clarity to this congregation and to our leaders so that they might daily follow Christ. Remove anything in our common life that would obstruct or hinder the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Help us to trust in God's love in this life and beyond this life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us pray as our Lord taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God bless you, that you may be a blessing to others, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.